Hey guys, what is going on? This is LarkNock1 slash AKDU Addict, and today I'm bringing you a 28 kills and 5 deaths team deathmatch on Whiteout with one of my lesser used but very fun classes, my Carbonizer Deatomizer combo class. Uh, in this gameplay, I'd first like to point out that I make the Deatomizer look way better than it probably is, uh, and that's because I built this class, feed up for the Deatomizer, and uh, the Carbonizer just sort of works very well as a long ranged alternative weapon, considering the perks that maximize the Deatomizer's potential. Uh, the perks I have on are Capacitor for the increased Deatomizer rate of fire, Ammo Belt for two extra mags of Deatomizer Fury, Supercharger for increased walking speeds while the Deatomizer is fully charged, and Light Armor for extra life because this class does need a little bit of extra padding. Uh, anyways guys, what I wanted to talk about today is a topic I've wanted to make a commentary about for a long time, uh, but there was never enough content to make it into a full-blown commentary until now. Uh, so as you have probably read in the title, this commentary is going to be about the final frontier, which is of course, space. Space to me at least, has always had this sort of insane appeal. I can't quite put my finger on it, because sci-fi films that aren't about space don't seem to draw me in as much as sci-fi films that are. Uh, something about space and the cosmos and all its infinite beauty just amazes me every single time. Uh, for example, Mass Effect 2 is my favorite single player game of all time. Uh, more realistically, however, whenever something in the news says something about some space-related event, I'm all over it. Which brings me to the two recent stories in the news. First, the landing of the Curiosity rover on Mars, and second, with the passing of one of my heroes, Neil Armstrong, who died on the 25th of August uh, due to complications and heart surgery, uh, which upon making this video was yesterday. The landing of the Curiosity rover on Mars was extremely interesting to me because it was the first rover to land successfully on Mars in over eight years. What's more interesting is that Curiosity is equipped with far more advanced technology than the last two rovers sent to Mars, namely Spirit and Opportunity. Because of the more advanced and larger gear, Curiosity was built far larger and heavier than its two predecessors. While Spirit and Opportunity weighed in around 400 pounds each, Curiosity is 3 meters long and weighs about 2,000 pounds or the weight of a small car, basically. Everything about the rover's high-tech gear is incredibly interesting and well worth the read if any of you are interested. For example, did you know that Curiosity is powered by a decaying plutonium-238 non-fissile core? The heat emitted from the radioactive core is converted into electricity by thermocouples. I don't know what any of that means, but it's awesome! Uh, <laughs> uh, the rover uses the power generated by its core to power a vast array of high-tech gear, most of it used for the analysis of the Martian atmosphere and sediment. Honestly, if any of this sciencey stuff interests you, I suggest you go on over to the Wikipedia page for the Curiosity rover and read up on some of the gear the rover is equipped with. I'll have the link in the description. As I said earlier, the second instance of space turning up in the news is with the death of a legend, the death of Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong was effectively the first man to walk and land on the lunar surface on July 19th, 1969. When he uttered the words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, he set an example for men and women to follow. Armstrong's status as the first human to ever walk on the moon brought him instant fame, and yet he took his fame extremely humbly and never made much of a deal out of it. Just a few years ago, Armstrong chastised NASA for discontinuing lunar landings. As one historian said of Armstrong, I think his genius was in his reclusiveness. He was the ultimate hero in an era of corruptible men. Another one of Armstrong's colleagues noted during a joint appearance, to this day, he's the one person on Earth I'm truly, truly envious of. Neil Armstrong lived and died for the progression of mankind, and its continued journey through the sciences and through the cosmos. Armstrong has said, Mystery creates wonder, and wonder is the basis of man's desire to understand. He's right with that statement. However, whether or not Armstrong was pessimistic or realistic enough to realize that wonder can be overshadowed by other desires, this is also unfortunately true. I'm sure Armstrong was comforted by the excitement brought about by thoughts of curiosity landing on the Martian surface just 20 days ago. And yet, just to draw a comparison to the United States budget priority, if the entire US defense budget were attributed towards projects like curiosity, we would be able to send five curiosity missions to Mars every three days. Of course, the NASA budget is itself part of the defense budget, but only accounts for about five billion of the 1.4 trillion dollar budget. That's less than 0.4%. Comparatively, the amount of money we spend ensuring the continued wars overseas makes up 50.5% of the U.S. defense budget. If one were to consider the quantity of money spent as a measure of priority, 
The U.S. considers foreign wars 126, 126 times more important than projects like Curiosity. For the first time since 1959, remember that number, 1959, NASA's annual budget dropped below 0.5% of the federal budget. NASA was founded in 1958, but it wasn't always this way. In 1966, NASA's budget made up 4.41% of the federal budget, the highest it's ever been. Despite the federal budget in 1966 being only $728 billion, $32.1 billion were attributed to NASA and its projects. Comparatively, the federal budget today is $3,335 billion, or $3.3 trillion, and only $16 billion are attributed to NASA. That's half what it was in 1966. If once again you were to draw the comparison that quantity of money is equivalent to priority, NASA was considered 9.2 times more important in 1966 than today. Why was that? Why were so many feats of ingenuity and science accomplished in the 60s and 70s while the rate has slowed today? The answer lies with the Soviet Union, oddly enough. Ironically, we have Stalin and Khrushchev's totalitarian state to thank for the invention of LEDs, artificial limbs, scratch-resistant lenses, radial tires, video enhancement analysis, firefighting equipment, baby food, solar energy, water purification, and many other leaps forward in structural technology. Why? Because the Soviet Union provided NASA and other US scientists with an immensely important resource. Competition. Make no mistake, there's a very important reason NASA's percent of the federal budget was highest in 1966. The fear of falling technologically behind the communist USSR pushed forward huge leaps in science and academics. For example, the National Defense Education Act of 1958 guaranteed partial scholarships and full scholarships to hundreds of thousands of students in the United States, as well as contributed the 2007 equivalent of $3 billion to colleges across the country. This surge in education and scientific funding goes unmatched by any other decade in United States history, and competition with the Soviet Union is entirely to thank for that. So where did the U.S. go wrong? Why do we prioritize military spending so much more than scientific ventures and education? Why are teachers today paid $20,000 to $30,000 a year to provide perhaps the most single important job there is to children and young adults? My answer comes with a small understanding of government and military spending, and my adequate understanding of how U.S. policy and campaign funding work. In this system, the U.S. currently operates with companies and corporations are considered people, individuals, which is a debate for an entirely different time. For now, just know that I come to the conclusion that it's a bogus idea. Because they're considered individuals, which they aren't, they're allowed to contribute to campaign donations. Each and every presidential election, for example, uh, each party receives hundreds of millions of dollars in donations from companies and corporations, establishing a system of legal bribery. In return, the politician is far more compliant, if you will, with the needs of these corporations. Corporations act solely upon the goal of generating a net profit, where the quality of the product they create comes second. Meaning, of course, if the quality of the product is improved, it is only for the sake of turning a larger profit, not for the sake of genuinely creating a higher quality product. In the government, military spending faces the exact same ordeal. The government does not spend on the military to establish a genuinely better world scene but to ensure the continued election of officials and the continued flow of money to private military arm and technologies companies. Essentially, the taxpayer's money go to the only thing the government has a chance of justifying spending frivolously, the military. With the face of liberty, freedom, and justice, it's hard to see what's so wrong with that. But yet, what gives us the freedom to make those decisions for other countries? Nobody. If we're actually fighting for liberty, freedom, and justice, then why does all of our money end up in war overseas, simply creating more conflict and bombing civilians. Essentially, the president, and I'm not just talking about any specifics, I'm talking about all modern presidents and administrative officials, push war on the agenda in order to funnel money to private arms industries, which provide hundreds of thousands of dollars to the presidential campaign donations. Uh, and you can begin to understand why we spend so much on the military. But when you look at an agency like NASA, they're going to get a minuscule amount because they don't provide a marketable service. They provide technology to people like you and me but they don't intend to sacrifice quality to turn a profit. They were a government agency established to better understanding of the cosmos, and as you can understand, that gets shelved when there's power and money to obtain. So that's it. That's everything. I just explained to you perhaps the best thing for the progression of mankind, and why your politicians can't care because we live in a system where it's okay to bribe the government. That's it.
That's the world we live in. Remember, kids, killing civilians in another country is 126 times more important than discovering life on Mars. Anyways, I apologize for getting really serious in this commentary. Uh, it was every feeling I have in regards to space, scientific research, and the U.S. government. Once again, I will be listing the names of everyone who will currently be getting your name on my custom Larknock 1 t-shirt. If you don't see your name or would like yours on there, go ahead and leave the name you want on it in the comment section enclosed in quotations. Uh, like this video if you liked it. I put a lot of work into this video. Uh, favorite it if you liked it a ton or if it reached out to you. Comment if you've got anything to talk about. Subscribe for more. And as always, guys, PEACE!